call this meeting's order. Please stand for the flag salute. Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided as follows. By having the time, date, and place of the meeting posted on the bulletin board in an administration building January 7, 2021. By sending a copy of the meeting notice to the Star Legend newspaper and the Union County local source on January 7, 2021. And by filing a copy with the Township of Hillside and Hillside Public Library on January 7, 2021, roll call. Mr. Yanda. Present. Ms. Best. Present. Ms. Horton Gibbons. Present. Mr. Howard. Present. Ms. Simmons. Present. Mr. Shapiro. Ms. Tucker. Present. Ms. Warrell. Present. Ms. Cook. Present. At this time, we would like to welcome everyone back to our first in-person meeting in a long time. We are turning. It's been a while. Before we get started with our great legend, then we're going to have a few acknowledgments of some of our staff and wonderful students. But we also would like to welcome you to our new Hillside Innovation Academy who is hosting this first in-person meeting. And moving forward, our board meetings will be traveling throughout our schools, throughout the district. So at this time, I would like to have our Hillside High School principal, Ms. Sitwa, come up to make acknowledgments of her Ivy League students, as well as her teacher of the year. <laughs> everyone. Sorry, like there's so much traffic out there. Um, so, you know, I'm really excited about the Ivy League students. Now, while in the past we've had many students go to Ivy League schools, the Board of Education has never recognized them. It's probably my fault. I should have told you about it, but we didn't. So, I, this is the first time we're recognizing three of our students that are going to Ivy League schools, and it won't be the last time. So, I, I like this tradition to continue. So let me talk, um, let me let you know who those students are. Our first one is Chidi Azuki. Is Chidi here? I'm here. All right, come on up, Chidi. Chidi will be attending Columbia University, um, majoring in biomedical education. Our next one is Max Edward. And he's our valedictorian. Is Max here? Hi, Max. Hi, Max. <laughs> since 2008. She is an innovative teacher who always, I threw this in Carol, thinks outside the box. Along with the rest of the World Language Department, she has been instrumental in transition, transitioning our students in uh, the conversational form of Spanish. Her lessons are always well-planned, activity-filled, and as she always says, wrap it up. Thanks. <laughs> As we face a pandemic, she never lost a beat. She endured her students, her, she ensured her students were fully engaged daily with work that was interesting, 
challenged their perspective, and overcame the obstacles of virtual instruction. One of the best things about Ms. Andino, and she won't say this, she is a technology whiz. I mean, she is so good at technology, and I, I sit and I look at her and I say, she should be working in the tech department, not the world language department. <laughs> She's that good. Okay, uh, one last note, and this is, there's a lot of great things about Carol Andino, but the best thing is she's a true common. She, you can find her at any outside event, whether it's academic, social, and every Saturday, whether they're playing at home or they're playing away, you'll see her in the stands at the football games. Go Commons, Carol Andino. Congratulations, Ms. Andino. At this point, I would like to call up Principal April Woe from Deanna G. Taylor Academy to introduce her Teacher of the Year. Good evening, members of the board, Reverend, and Dr. Eichholz. I have the pleasure of introducing Danielle Down as the first Teacher of the Year for Deanna G. Taylor Academy. Danielle does a wonderful job of providing instruction in math and science for our fifth graders. She graduated from the College of New Jersey and she earned her elementary teaching certificates from Rutgers. Danielle was selected as Teacher of the Year because she takes the time to develop relationships with her students and families. And she understands that this is truly the most important way to reach them and to plan lessons and to make sure that they are successful. And in return, her scholars work hard because they know that she truly cares about them. Congratulations, Danielle Down. Congratulations. Uh, next, we'll have Dr. Sharon Fasante from Ola Edwards Community School introduce our Teacher of the Year. Good evening, Board of Education, Mr. Gregory, Dr. It is with great pleasure that I have the opportunity to introduce and honor Mr. Michael Brennan as Ola Edwards' Union County Teacher of the Year. Mr. Brennan has been a special education teacher in the district for nine years. For the last six years, he's been at Ola Edwards in a multi-age autistic classroom. As his administrator, I have had the opportunity to observe his commitment to the students in the classroom and also his commitment to our school. He is particularly gifted at identifying the needs of the students and ensuring that he finds the resources to address those needs to keep their education moving forward. He is incredibly patient with the students and compassionate. And that combination allows the students to cope with any issues that they have and nothing is challenge challenging their education. He is also brought to our school an awareness to autism. He has coordinated the Lighted Up Blue campaign and he has also participated in multiple fundraisers all the proceeds going to autism students. So I believe it's his, his, his academic strength and his compassionate attitude that really has made him a strong candidate to be Union County Teacher of the Year. So I would like to say, Mr. Brennan, thank you for all that you do for our students and our school. Congratulations on Union County Teacher of the Year and also congratulations he got married this year and he has his lovely wife. Thank you, Dr. Fasante. Congratulations. Next, we'll have Principal Raheem Graham at Walter Oakland Beagle School introduce his teacher of the year. Good evening, Water Education team, and good evening, parents. I want to thank you for the opportunity to work at WOK. Uh, we have a great team there. I want to uh, thank Julie Jewell 
for being a great representative for the WOK team. You represent our WOK model to the team. Our motto is welcome to WOK where every student matters and every moment counts. Our WOK team selected you to be the 2020-2021 Teacher of the Year because you hold the highest standards for our scholars and take and takes every opportunity to assist our students. I had a talk with her just recently. I said, uh, Julie, you seem to do well with our honor students. Um, you know, I'm going to give you an honors class next year. And uh, she said, I do well with all students. So, you know, that's the kind of person she is. Uh, she, um, she has shown the most growth in Lincoln math assessments, and she volunteers most of her time in servicing our students. I'm fortunate to work with Julie Jewel. I want to say thank you. Thank you, Principal Graham. And I see Ms. Palmer Gillier. Uh, Ms. Palmer Gillier, please. Absolutely. From AP Morris Early Childhood Center. Good evening, board members, Dr. E and Mr. Gregory. It is an honor and pleasure to introduce our Teacher of the Year at A.P. Morris Early Childhood Center, Joseph Bowen. Mr. Bowen learned how amazing physical education and health can be while at Montclair State University. He spent years trying to remake gym into a fun learning experience for our students. His vision came into bloom in Hillside. Through online learning has been very difficult Bowen has used this opportunity to grow in the school community with whatever technology tools he has available. He helped with Canvas support for all of his colleagues and other teachers in the district. He also helped with parents as well as administrators and staff in online learning. He's also made movies and virtual school community events and you can see most of his events on YouTube. It is a pleasure to honor Joseph Bowen. Unfortunately, he had a root canal, so he's not here today. <laughs> so he's a little pain right now, so he says thank you on his behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask all of our honorees to come forward right now for a picture? Oh, yes, please. Uh, Herb Walker School. This is Walker and Beer. My name is Alyssa Valiante. Um, I have the honor of speaking about one of my colleagues and a friend, Mrs. Jennifer Pinho. Mrs. Pinho has been a special education teacher for the past 16 years in Hillside. She has been a true leader during virtual learning and has led the staff through the setup of virtual instruction, developing interactive lessons, turnkeying information to the staff and colleagues, as well as being a supporter of social and emotional learning. Mrs. Pinho is an educator who can be relied upon to handle many tasks for students and staff on various levels. She is the co-anti-bullying specialist for Herd and Looker, as well as one of the coordinators for the school climate and safety team. She and her husband Carlos are the proud parents of twin fifth grade boys, which are preventing her from being here tonight as they are celebrating their fifth grade promotion pool party. And, but she can always be counted on to lend a helping hand wherever it is needed. At this time, can I have our honorees come forward for a picture?
congratulations to you all to get next Tuesday off. <laughs> So at this time on our screen, you'll see pictures that were taken at our prom. We had a wonderful evening under the stars on June 4th. I would like to thank all the people who came out to help. Of course, Ms. Sitwa, Ms. Baller, we had so many people to come out, our board members, and it was a very successful night. And there is another video of the drone that will be coming out tomorrow. So it will be on our website and everyone will have a chance to see the event live. At this time, I would like to take a motion to go into public comments. Second. Uh, residents are requested to state their names, address, and subject matter. In the event it appears the public comment portion of the meeting may exceed 15 minutes, the presiding officer may limit each statement made by a participant to three minute durations. Issues raised by members of the public may or may not be responded to by the board. All comments will be considered and a response will be forthcoming if and when appropriate. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of other individuals when speaking. Specifically, comments regarding students and employees of the board are, dis are discouraged and will not be responded to by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights afforded by the laws of the state of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility, nor will it be liable for any comments made by members of the public. Members of the public should consider their comments in light of legal rights of those affected or identified in their comments and be aware that they are legally responsible and reliable for their comments. Anyone wishing to make comments can come forward to the mic. Thank you. I just wanted to be the first one to get up. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I wanted to say that I did not help with the prom this year, but I got a lot of phone calls from parents saying, 63 Clark Street, Sharina Del Ross, <laughs> sorry. I got a lot of calls from parents saying how wonderful the prom was. They were saying how organized it was, how the free food was good. <laughs> and I just want to commend you for making a way out of no way so that the children or the young adults could have something that they could remember. Because prom is a really important thing, you know, in your life. Because I remember mine. So I want to thank you for doing that. Because you did a wonderful job. Even though I didn't help and they thought I did. But I'm just saying. I started to take credit for it. But I didn't, I didn't want to be dishonest. So I want to thank you for that. Okay? All right. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to come forward with comments tonight? Hi, Marissa West, 36 Curtin Street. Um, I had a couple of questions, maybe not on the agenda, but um, I was reading that Hillside is getting funds from the American Rescue Plan, ARP Esser. So I was very excited to hear the amount. And I haven't seen a budget report yet for next year. So I wanted to come out and say that every time I get a chance to say it to Mr. Gregory or the Board of Ed, I think we desperately need clubs at the elementary level. Um, we have a lot of um, teachers that throughout the years have volunteer your time in order just to get anything done for the kids, whether it's how the science, uh, Girls Rock Science program started, or Mr. Masterson doing the math club at Hurley Booker, um, Mr. Durplinger when he was teaching, he would um, do student council. So I just think that if we could get some, now that we have funds, maybe not, we can't use from the ESSER, but we could shift some stuff around and maybe just get some clubs going, I think, for the students. Um, a couple of years ago, 
we had a perennial math competition at back then in Washington. And it was a virtual competition um, throughout the state of New Jersey. And this third graders got first place amongst 10 or 15 schools across the state of New Jersey. And that was just one day. They put them together just that one time. And I thought to myself, how wonderful would it be if we had a little math club and they could compete against you know, other schools in New Jersey that would bring, you know, like, um, life to our schools. Um, and I think it would be something fun for the kids to do. Um, I don't think that a teacher should have to volunteer their time to get this done for the students. And so I think that they need your support um, financially to get it done. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, uh, I assume, I, I, I'm going to assume that in September we're going to all be, right, we're going to go back. However, are we going to have anything in place where if a teacher has a quarantine or if a child has a quarantine, are we going to have that online option um, since we already have the systems set up to do so? Um, just because just because we say in September we're going back and see COVID is going to go away on it. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and also, we haven't heard anything regarding busing. Um, I believe, not last year, but the year before, we had complimentary busing from Ola Edwards to AD Waters or and, and vice versa. Just because when we did the reconfigurations, we took everyone from the AD Morris side and put them in the further school over at Ola Edwards, so are we going to continue with the testing? <coughs> okay. Um, I, I just want to say I know that you guys are working on it, but as a parent, I would like to know ASAP because if I have to take my child or, or make arrangements, I, I want to start now for September. Um, so the sooner you guys get back to us, the earlier we go. Um, then the other um, question or comment was about the summer enrichment. Um, I'm assuming that came from the ESSER funds, because I know we usually have the remedial um, summer program, but I was happy to see that we extended it to anyone that wanted it. The only um, thing with that is I went on the website to any school, with, uh, there's no information on the summer enrichment program. What days it's going to be offered, what time um, is it going to be um, part of the, is it going to be just extension of what we do for the remedial, is, is it going to be a program altogether? Um, parents have until tomorrow to decide, but we just don't have enough information. Um, also, we, um, we didn't know if before and after school would be available. Um, since they do do summer camp, um, I'm not sure if they have to school to be available. Okay, so uh, if they have students, they are willing to do before and after care. They did reach out to us yesterday. Okay, so that's so. If we have to decide by tomorrow, this is the information that we kind of need to know so we can decide how to respond to our teachers. Um, the other thing, but I'm happy that the board meetings are in person, how they used to be, but as someone that works in New York, and oftentimes, especially on board of ed meetings night, I get stuck in the Lincoln Tunnel. Are we still going to stream the meetings on YouTube now that we have that technology? Is that a, just, just throwing it out there as a thought, but I think um, it just um, keeps parents informed, even if they don't submit questions even could at least play it back and you know I like to hear the superintendent's report see what's going on and I can always play it back um, if that could be made um, sorry I have oh for um, the solar panels that we're installing at the various schools is Deanna Taylor not getting installed because 
your buildings are still being renovated or um and the consultants that came in to do that and sweep up the entire district uh -huh. found the spots that were the most necessary okay. and incorporated the solar panels into our standards. I can respond to that real quick. 
Uh, so <clears throat> we are we just submitted our final unit results, and each school is going to get what's called a fingertip file for each student. It'll show how they did throughout the year on each Lincoln assessment and how they did in previous years on NJSLA. So we're just waiting for the organization to send us that. Uh, Dr. Bevere, do we have an estimated time when we think those reports will be available? They'll be available sometime mid-summer. What they're doing is they're creating a holistic view. They're taking all of your child's test scores from the entire year, putting them on a fingertip file, so that takes a little bit of time for them to build, and then the buildings will have them, and they'll share them at the appropriate time. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. In this quest, there's a, a saying going around now that snow days are, are in the past. <laughs>
came in, she's a resident in Hillside with no students, but volunteered her time to speak about communications. Um, and Doug Perigno, Jr., um, who is also a Hillside firefighter, came to us and presented to the students on um, career real estate, which is a licensed real estate video as well. Um, we got a lot of great feedback, and I'd really like to thank all of those four people and a number of people here in the room who really worked very hard to help us make this a success. Dr. Sante, his love is here as well. Um, and uh, one of the secretaries who really worked above and beyond is Perel. She helped us set up everything to make sure that we have all the school um, regulations and safety methods in place for the virtual meetings. And she helped me to monitor them to make sure that we were secure and in respect that. So I'd really just like to publicly thank them. Um, Ms. West already covered a number of items that I have on my list. One was my kids, like thank her for that. <laughs> She's good like that. She also had great taste in um, uh, And then also very sad as well to see the number of resignations. Mr. Dirklinger is a huge loss in this district. Um, he was a first grade teacher when my son was in high school with the Morris. He did band, he did chorus with them, he did a number of other things with them. Um, and I was lucky enough that when he moved up to the later grades, my other daughter had him. And I really attribute her continued enthusiasm for reading and reading well above her level to him because he challenged her constantly encouraged the reading in, in a way that many teachers do, like he just was a love you know. And in, in response to something Ms. West said, I think communication was a skill of his, but it was his absolute passion to do what is best for students and parents. I will never forget him going and trying to find Google Translate and get on that because he had a parent coming in who didn't speak a language that he spoke and he couldn't find a translator, so he sat down with them one-on-one like that, so that those parents felt engaged, asked questions, and felt supported. So this is a, it is a huge loss to the district. He is a true leader. We're going to see him again in the future going places, um, and it's just a shame he's not going to make it inside. Uh, also, I mean Caravano. I see that she's retiring. I remember her when my son first started at school. She was a phenomenal secretary who always went above and beyond. Um, happy for her that she's retiring. Really sad to see her leaving the district. Um, How phenomenal our teachers have been this year. Unbelievable. I had the opportunity to hear my teachers interacting with their classes when they were home fully virtual, and I was blown away at what these teachers faced with the challenges of these children and how professionally and empathetically they responded. And how, as busy as they were, I would still get a phone call just to say, You know, I did a great job today, or I'm really proud of you. Things like that. Um, so it wasn't just when there was a problem, they were reaching out in all respects and available in ways that I could not imagine. And Dr. Masante and her staff at the school have been phenomenal. They've been so engaged and reactive in a very difficult year. I just cannot thank them all. Thank you. Do we have any more comments? Good evening. I was about to say good morning. I don't know why. Um, but good evening, everyone. My name is Aruna Mathura. I live at 133 Silver Ave, and I'm also a teacher at WOK. I just want to say, first off, congratulations to all of the many wonderful teachers of the year this year. Um, it's been trying, but we got here. Um, and I just wanted to make mention because last year, WOK became one of the first schools in the entire country to have Junior Row Kappa um, technically international on a high school level, but for the middle school level, it just became available last year. Unfortunately, our induction ceremony last year for our 12 students was scheduled for March 17th, and that was very beginning of the pandemic. So unfortunately, they didn't get their just desserts in terms of getting their induction ceremony. Unfortunately, this year, there was a holdup from the NCSS, the National Council for Social Studies, um, that delayed their certificates coming in and I literally just got them today. So unfortunately, the eighth graders didn't get their induction ceremony again. Um, they got all of their accolades for, um, for their graduation ceremony, but they didn't get the actual induction that they so 
very much deserve. Um, but I just want to make mention that last year we had 12 inductees for our inaugural class. This year we have 10 inductees. And I'm hoping that next year when we are back in person fully, that we will have even more and they will finally get their, their reward that they have worked so incredibly hard for. So I just want to make mention of that to you guys and thank you for all of your support. Thank you. And this time I'd like to take a motion to close as it pertains to um, the teachers and how well they have done through this pandemic and how they helped the children and um, also we had a pageant that we were promoting and a lot of our girls from Hillside entered their pageant and this is Juliana Pelton. She won two, two, two crowns and three trophies in the, in the pageant. And I'm very proud that she represented Hillside well, as well as Ola Edwards. So we have some phenomenal children in our district. And most of all, we have some phenomenal parents. And without the parents, we would not have children. And the parents have a voice and they speak their mind. And I hope that you're listening to what they're saying and what they want. Because they're not asking for much. They just want the growth and development of their children to be taken seriously because my children went here and my children are thriving, they're doing well. And I know that Hillside is the reason why. You have some great principals, you have some great teachers. The teachers are phenomenal. Understand what you have, know their wealth. That's I know that you know that. I'm just saying it out loud. Thank you. Vice President, esteemed board members, and members of this amazing community. I want to begin by congratulating members of Hillside High School's Class of 2021, who will be graduating this Monday, June 21st, at 6 p.m.? 6.30. 6.30, sorry, at Woodfield Stadium. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend their amazing prom on June 4th. I really want to thank board members and our high school administrative team, support staff, for giving these amazing students a night to remember. Uh, members of the class of 2021 are on pace to set a record high graduation rate, which will be finalized in August, and have been accepted into 62 colleges around the country, receiving over $1.5 million in scholarships. I think that's worthy of a round of applause. Also, I uh, just want to thank and acknowledge our alumnus that are members of the Hillside Scholarship Fund for continuing to support students transitioning into college and pursuing their dreams. I truly believe all students in Hillside who persevered through virtual learning over the past 16 months have displayed resilience and brilliance 
and will become America's next great generation. They went from pen and paper to keyboards and screens and could not have experienced success in that learning environment without the support of our extraordinary educators, their amazing families and community members, all of whom adjusted to meet Generation Z where they are and ensure our students in Hillside are on the path to live a middle class lifestyle and beyond while experiencing the boundless opportunities prevalent in our nation and world. I also want to congratulate all eighth graders at Walter O'Prem Beagle School who will begin their high school careers this fall. Their commencement ceremony is at 10 a.m. on June 21st at Woodfield Stadium. Seven of those students will begin their high school and college careers in two weeks. As members of the Kane University Future Scholars Program, we had an induction ceremony for those students on June 1st at Hillside High School where Kane's bus came to greet and welcome them to campus every year throughout high school. Uh, they will be earning credits at Hillside High School while simultaneously attending classes at Kane University, earning college credits for free. I also want to congratulate all the elementary students at Hurd and Looker or Edwards School who were recently inducted into the National Elementary Honor Society uh, and all Hillside Public School students who remained on the honor roll throughout the year and or were students of the month. On Saturday, June 5th, I had the opportunity to attend the Women of Wellness STEM pageant at the Van Vleck House and Gardens in Montclair and view our girls who participated in this program and they shine. Uh, we dominated the program. Uh, the program was a Miss Glitz Glamour and Brains STEM pageant. So I do have to commend and congratulate all of those young ladies and their families who were crowned for their achievements. I also want to thank Dr. Khadija Ishmael, President of Women of Wellness New Jersey, and also a former student at Hurd and Looker School for extending this opportunity to our students and families. Uh, I'd like to wish all Hillside Public School employees who are retiring or transitioning success in the next chapter of their lives. We want to thank them for their service to our school community. And finally, on the congratulatory note, I want to uh, give a special congratulations to Giovanna Cabral. She's a fourth grade ESL student at Hurd and Looker who won a statewide writing contest sponsored by the New Jersey Teachers of English to speakers and other languages. She won a laptop for her achievement and should be commended for her resilience and growth throughout this school year. On that note, we successfully administered and concluded mandated state testing for ELL students and those with individual education plans the first week in June. As all of us know, our schools came to life on May 24th as we successfully reopened our doors for in-person instruction. Roughly 31% of our families district-wide opted to send their students back and our teachers and administrators did a phenomenal job successfully implementing hybrid instruction. I want to thank all Hillside Public School staff, the board, uh, and our community members for supporting and providing our families this opportunity and doing it with such grace and excellence. On Monday, May 17th, Governor Murphy announced that all schools will be required to provide full day in-person instruction as they were prior to the COVID-19 public health emergency in September of 2021. As such, all students in Hillside will report back to school on September 2nd for five full days of instruction, something we've all been waiting for for quite some time. Per Executive Order 175, remote learning will not be an option in September, but we expect guidance to come from the state in the near future on remote learning for students whose health conditions prevent them from reporting to school and we'll share that accordingly. Our safe return to in-person instruction plan will be posted on our website on June 24th 
This plan outlines our current mitigation strategies and procedures aimed to help and safety of all staff and students, in addition to ways we will address our students' academic and social emotional needs. Uh, parents, we're gonna give you an opportunity to uh, provide comments on that plan once it is posted. These plans should always be considered living documents and are required to be updated based on health trends and guidance from the CDC, New Jersey Department of Health, and the Department of Education. Right now, mask and physical distancing are still required during the school day. In instances of extreme heat, districts can waive those requirements. This summer, we will be offering uh, a free summer academy for kindergarten through eighth grade students focused on English language arts, math, and social emotional learning. We encourage all families interested to email their child's teacher or principal and enroll them. We will also be partnering with Kane University and Scholastics to offer a summer literacy acceleration camp for students in third through eighth grade. All of our summer program offerings are based on enrollment and board approval. So I strongly urge families to take advantage of this opportunity. And yes, Ms. West will make sure that is posted on our website. Uh, it's hard to believe that the last day of this historic, unprecedented school year is Monday, June 21st. Our district made tremendous progress this year and amid extreme challenges. We struggled with virtual learning, as all of you know, last spring, but transformed it this fall to include live synchronized instruction. And as noted in public uh, comments, our teachers did a phenomenal job. They could not have done that without the support of our school leaders, without the support of this board, more importantly, this community. Uh, you know, we adopted and implemented a nationally ranked K through 8 ELA curriculum and a K through 11 math curriculum and we did that virtually. Rolling out any new curriculum is challenging. Doing it virtually is three times harder. We also adopted a valid assessment system, link it, directly aligned to state assessments that provide us an accurate picture of our progress and a better understanding of our, the academic needs of our students, moreover the professional development needs of our teachers. Let's always remember an organization that learns together, grows together. We came up with protocols for professional learning communities to assist our teachers and school leaders in planning and implementing curriculum, additionally using data to inform instruction. Our efforts led to better outcomes for students. On our website, we have our mid-year Lincoln Progress Report, which indicates that across all tested grade levels, 62% of our students outgrew their academic peers in English language arts, and 55% outgrew them in math. We surpassed our state accountability goal for assessments in English and math and experienced growth in both areas for the first time in two years. Uh, an additional 160 students, based on our mid-year report, are now meeting expectations uh, in English and math, and we anticipate more when we receive our uh, final report at the end of June. We'll make sure we make those results available to our school community and parents. Uh, as I previously mentioned, our graduation rate is on the rise and we'll be adding a school to our portfolio of options for families with the opening of Hillside Innovation Academy. We made some tremendous strides in technology, including bringing our student to device ratio to one to one, providing Wi-Fi access to our families in need, and securing and strengthening our network while improving our website. We surpassed our attendance goals for this academic year and have more efficient systems to address the social emotional needs of our students, educators, and families. It's been a year I'm sure none of us will ever forget, but one of notable progress. In closing, I just want to thank all of our families, our guardians, our caretakers, our PTAs, 
and this community for your continued partnership and support. We realize the impact this year had on all of our personal lives and that of our students. I hope everyone enjoys their summer break and look forward to an amazing 21-22 school year where we return to normalcy and continue our work towards transforming all schools in Hillside to becoming models of educational excellence. Let's let our mission drive our work and ensure we continue to make decisions that improve the lives of our students, families, and community. That concludes my report this evening. As always, a better tomorrow starts with us today. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I would like to take a motion to go into the executive session. Motion? Second. Aye. We are resolved pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act that the Board of Education meet in closed executive session at this time to discuss matters related to labor agenda items. The board will reconvene in public session at the conclusion of the closed session. The matters discussed in closed session will be disclosed to the public as soon as the need for confidentiality no longer exists. I'd like to take a motion to go back into the open, pu open public session. Motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. At this time, I would like to ask Ms. Best to move items under finance. I would like to move items 1 through 3 and 6 through 11 under finance. Second. Well, just a, a change for the date. I guess number 1 should say June 1st, not April 20th. Correct. Right. Yeah. No, those are the minutes from the last, uh, the last meeting. We'll just see earlier. Okay. We didn't get. So, so we're not doing the, the, the June meeting. June two will come in together in July. Okay. Your second one. Yes. Mr. Yanda. Yes. Ms. Best. Yes. Ms. Gordon Gibbons. Yes. Mr. Howard. Yes. Ms. Simmons. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Gibbons, can you move items on the buildings and grounds? I'd like to move items on the Second. Mr. Yanda. I just have a question on number one. Are we, are we going to remove all the, I'm guessing we're going to remove all, all the lettering from saying Hillside Board of Education off the van before we get rid of it? Yeah, okay. that's absolutely true. Mr. Yanda. Yes. Ms. Best. Yes. Ms. Horton Gibbons. Yes. Mr. Howard. Yes. Ms. Simmons. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Wall, can you move items under education? I move to accept items 1 through 24 under education. Second. Who was that second? I'm sorry. Second. Second. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Simmons. Yes. Mr. Tucker. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Howard, can you move? I am Southern Labor. I move to accept items 1 through 61 under the ribbon. Second. Mr. Yanda. Yes. Ms. Best. Yes. Ms. Horton Gibbons. Yes. Mr. Howard. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Tucker. Yes. Ms. Wall. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. T
Yes to everything except note number 58. Yes. 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 Is there any old any business anyone would like to discuss? Oh, actually, one old business. I forgot to ask a question under finance. For one of the checks, uh, the Innovation Academy breakfast was it? What was that for? That was organization for the new family that they were coming in and brought in some time. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have our board member comments, and we're going to ask that it come from our birthday girl, our very own Eleanor Worrell. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you and welcome public. We're so glad to see you back with us. I want to say um, congratulations to all of our teachers of the year, our students that are no longer here. I wish we were able to say something before they left. So proud of our Ivy League students, but also proud of all of our graduating students for the year 2021. Teachers, staff, Thank you for all that you did to bring us through this pandemic. You did an excellent job. And we are very, very pleased with all that you have given to our community and our students and our parents. As bad as the pandemic was, there were some positives that came out of it. I believe, and I'm an educator as well, that we formed better relationships with our parents and our students because we were forced to have to talk to them daily. So th there were some positives that came out of our being shut down for a year and a half. But I am also pleased that we are going to come back in September and see their beautiful faces and work with them one-on-one -on -one, like, once again. Thank you for coming out tonight. Have a wonderful summer, and we'll see you next month. to close out our evening. I just want to make a few announcements starting with for our board members. Anyone interested in coming out tomorrow at 11 a.m. to serve our seniors at their senior barbecue. You're welcome to come out, board members only, and of course, administration. <laughs> as well as June 19th, at 11 a.m., we'll have our Juneteenth ceremony in front of Hillside High School to 85 Liberty Avenue. That is 11 a.m. We have some of our students and our staff participating in this ceremony. And of course, Monday, June 21st, 10 a.m. is our eighth grade graduation. Tickets only, as well as 6.30 p.m. is going to be our senior graduation, both to be held at Woodruff Stadium on Coenet Street. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.